you do, and thank you so much. I appreciate it. Well, let's make sure that we can do this, okay? Because the court has rules, and uh, I don't know whether they'll admit me, but we'll see. Okay. Um, can, um, I, I sent you some questions, and I just need to get some basic information. First of all, they have, as you rightly said, they have certain questions that they need you to answer in order to determine competence. That's the one thing. And the three are what I sent you. Um, so the first one is, do you understand the charges that, these are not what I've said, this is just what the, the court said. Um, do you understand the charges that have been brought against you? I do understand, I mean, I do comprehend them. Can you tell me what those are? Because I'm a little confused about that, Jessica. Go ahead. Yeah, there's a... Go ahead. Pardon me? I said I'm just going to jot this down. Okay. So, yeah, I apologize for my appearance. I've been working on motions all day. I have no makeup or anything on. It, and, and I had a lot of my filings um, kicked back to me, so it took a lot more time than I had expected. Yeah. Hours Although, longer. I don't have to apologize for okay. that. Don't you look very pretty. There's nothing wrong with you. So. I, I didn't mean to. You, you say you were working on motions? What's that? Mean? Yeah. Motions, mo for the court? motions for the court case. Yep. This, the one that we're talking about now. Okay. And so those... Um, uh, charges are traffic citations um, under the under the Maryland uh, driver's license, and okay. one of those is a DUI driving under the influence. Okay. Uh, one is a DWI driving while impaired. Um, okay. One is a refusal to. I'm not sure how the verbiage, but submit or to produce um, a driver's license and registration. Oh, you mean when they stopped you, you didn't turn it over? Is that it? Correct. Okay. And, uh, and so this is only concerning driving. When you say traffic, you mean just driving, trafficking, right? You don't mean trafficking in drugs. Or <laughs> I was a little confused. Correct. People use it. Actually, so Actually see, I, I've studied some of these issues um, to do with the Constitution and um, right. some of the history and, and uh, the variation between law, um, natural law, uh, constitutional law, right. statutes and codes, and um, some other variations like admiralty law. And so there is right. a difference between driving and traveling. Um, right. And so one is a right that we have, um, and one is a uh, privilege that has been given to us through the state. Um, and do you want to argue from one point of view to another? Is that what you're doing? I would like to. Okay. Now, you remember, I'm not a, an attorney or a lawyer. Yeah. I'm a psychologist. Mm -hmm. So right. um, the one issue about that is normally... One's attorney asks me to provide this service, so I don't. I'm not sure that I can do it without an attorney. I mean, I may submit, and I may be absolutely right, but the court says you don't have any standing. Standing meaning that you're not permitted in the court. You have to use an attorney somehow. Do you have an attorney that you're working with? Because you, had, I think you had mentioned that you did. You, got rid of one or two. Is that correct? Yeah, I terminated the contract, um, you know, as per our, our written uh, agreement for retainer was my uh -huh. right. Um, and so there has been some issue with the court over that. Um, as far as I know, I have every right to self-defense and right. to, you know, defend myself in court against any claimant. And so that is a point of contention in this issue, and I do I do recognize that you're a psychiatrist and not a attorney. Oh, wait, not, a, not a psychiatrist. Okay. A psych psychiatrist is a bad guy. Okay. I'm a psychologist. <laughs> okay, a, psychologist. A psychologist has a PhD. A psychiatrist has an MD. Um, so you're not. I can't prescribe drugs. So right. As my mother always said, the difference is that the psychiatrist doesn't have a PhD. So, gotcha. No, but then. I, you seem to have some connection with Scientology, and I, as you know, I've been speaking, been friends with many of them. I'm not a Scientologist, but I've been very friendly with them, and they hate psychiatrists, oh. but they love 
psychologist. I actually, I actually don't know any uh, Scientologist. Is that what it is? Not that I know of. Nobody who has made me aware of the fact. Okay, good. It doesn't matter to me. I just, you had asked me. You know, I had asked you, how did you find me? And you said you saw my speech, and that was when I got an award. They were very nice, but um, yeah. some people say, "Well, are you a Scientologist?" I said, "No," but that to me, that's just another religion. So yeah, I, I'm not in one. You know, it doesn't matter to me. That's fine. Yeah, um, I've never known any that admitted that they were Scientologists to me. Well, that's because so many there's so so many people hate Scientologists, and uh, I've been defending them because I say there's they have a right to their religion just like everybody else, yeah. and I have been trying to protect them. Um, I wrote a big chapter about this in my last book, um, you know, because everybody says, well, Scientology is a cult. And I said, well, what isn't a cult? But anyway, I, I don't mean to go off on that. But oh, yeah. <laughs> I could go off on that. Your, your last uh, attorneys, can you just tell me briefly um, why you got rid of him? Uh, because he was making, uh, he would... He stated that he was going to get um, certain discovery from the police, and he never did that. Um, then he would, um, there was a, also, in addition to the traffic citations, there was a cannabis um, citation. And um, it was just, he, did, he was supposed to pay that and send me the receipt, and that, you know, I had given him um written instructions on doing that. And he repeatedly asked me if that was what I wished to do. And I had to continue to repeat myself and state, yes, that is what I want you to do. Get rid of the charge, pay it off. And so it came up to the very last day that it was due and I still had no receipt that it was paid. And so I had to go out of my way and drive, you know, three hours to get there and I was standing in line at 3.30 right before they closed and just then got notice from the attorney that they had paid it. But on the way, I got a bunch of phone calls from their office. And every time I would answer the phone, nobody would be there. I would get transferred to their voicemail. A lot of very, you know, um, you know, I, I'm not really sure how to describe those uh well, they're giving you the runaround, as we say. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't, I didn't want to, you know. No, that's a perfectly legitimate thing. I mean, that's yeah, they, I didn't. Really, know. They don't want to talk to you. They're trying to get rid of you, and uh, yeah. they don't have any good reason, so they're just not answering the phone. Yeah, and so, and prior to that, I had asked a lot of questions because um, at the time I didn't have a Maryland driver's license; I had a Virginia driver's license, right. and there was the potential I found in looking for an attorney that I could be involved in four different court, court cases, um, two in Maryland and two in Virginia, one at the you know Motor Vehicles Administration for each state and one in the um, criminal court for each state. So I, um, a, a, you know, continued to inquire with the attorney that I did hire um, about getting doing what the other attorneys had advised immediately, even just upon the consultation, to right. transfer my license to Maryland, where I actually am a resident. I was born and right. raised there um, and live there from time to time. Um, and so so that, that that would eliminate one or two of the court cases. Rather than having four, I would only have the two in Maryland to deal with. And right. then even beyond that, I found out that one of those Maryland court cases could have also been eliminated if the attorney had given me the proper right. advice. And so I have been um, stressed out by this entire scenario to such a, um, you know, a devastating degree that right. it's even tough to talk about it because it's been so detrimental to my well-being. I understand what you're talking about very well. I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, So the specific charges are what you just listed. It had to do with driving under the influence, driving while intoxicated, oh, and, ref and refusal to turn over requested documents. And I actually, I actually forgot to mention the first and most important um, charge was actually um, an alleged speeding infraction, okay. which is the reason. Oh, so 
for so the you're, stop. You're, you're, you're questioning that you were speeding, is that correct? Yeah, I'm not sure if I was or if I wasn't. Did they record it on some device at all? Yeah, I, I'd assume so. Um, that was the yeah. discovery that the attorney was supposed to get, and I don't, I still don't have it. Okay. And, um, okay, have you been to court at all? Um, I did go to a, a status conference hearing. Well, I went to, I'm sorry, it was a district court um, trial uh, date for April 4th, and that was through remote hearing. And um, the attorney that I hired went to the actual physical courthouse right. in person, and right. I did, um, like, similar to what we're doing now. And the attorney advised that um, he did not believe the judge was going to give a, a PBJ, on the what is a PPJ? I don't know. It's a is. probation before judgment. Okay. And yeah. so he advised that he felt it would be in my best interest to pray a jury trial to circuit court, which I didn't okay. exactly agree on or I agree I didn't agree with, right. but I agreed to under duress. This whole thing is under duress. Um right. and uh so um, that's what happened at that okay. case, the first trial in district court. He basically made one appearance in that case and, you know, referred it to the circuit court. And in circuit court, even though he had already been terminated, um, you know, as per our contract, um, the judge didn't dismiss him. And right. even though the motion to strike appearance was uh, in their on record in their court for over three weeks, he showed up. The attorney that I had fired and that I already sent a letter of intent to sue over right. his malpractice, um, he showed up to the uh, status conference. I'm just going to plug my computer in. I'm noticing I'm losing battery. Um, so uh, he showed up to the status conference after he was terminated. And had filed a motion to withdraw himself, and um, I had already sent him a letter of intent to sue, right. and was representing me against my, you know, will and against our contract. And right. um, he was officially, according to the court, um, it, it seems, according to the transcript and the the words, the language that the um, state's attorney was using, he was officially my representative when the competency evaluation was ordered and he didn't do anything to defend me. Um, you know, I've told him that I was in fear that that may be, um, what the state would be after in my case because of the other, um, issues that aren't divulged by the government about me being trafficked by them. Wait, stop right there. When you say being trafficked, I don't understand what you mean by that. Can you tell me what that means? Well, what ended, what happened was I was a student at Catholic University. Right, um, you know, I remember, yeah. Yep, and I answered an ad in the city paper, uh -huh. unwittingly, unknowingly, um, for the woman that they called the DC Madam. I don't know anything about it. Go ahead, tell well, me. It was a, it, well, some reporters have said it was a, uh, as significant as Watergate, the Watergate scandal. Um, it was a uh, madam in Washington, D.C. And because I was trafficked by her, it, and I use the word trafficked, I mentioned to you because that's how the United States Code describes it um, in, you know, the criminal activity by government officials. When you say traffic, you're talking about traffic for sex? Yes, that that's correct. And so what you said you did not know was that this was some kind of advertisement for you to provide sex for a service Correct. or a money. And did you ever do that or not? Actually, when I went to the interview for the job, right. um, I was told before I signed the contract that it had nothing to do with sex. And so you, you did meet with this woman, madam, whatever, and... I don't, you know, this is all new to me, Jessica. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. Um, the news stories about the DC madam, they're, they're out in the media, um, but they're 
back in 2006 is when it first um, was publicized. Um, and I was first trafficked by her in 2002. And one of the facts that I know that isn't being admitted by media or government in all of the cases that have come about um, is that I was trafficked to Jeffrey Epstein. And Jesus. yeah, by her. Um, the first interview I went on was with an attorney of theirs. Um, his name in the media, they said, was Paul Hung. He was an Oriental man and an attorney. How do you spell, how do you spell Hung? Um, H-O-N. I, the way I've seen it spelled was H-A-U-N-G, okay. I believe. Right, okay. Okay, the plot gets thick, doesn't it? Yeah, okay. and so... And, okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Jessica. Oh, Don't no worry. worries. Um... If, if you have any questions if, about anything I, I state, just let me know. No, you're doing fine. You're okay. doing fine. So I've been, um, uh, since I spoke out, um, my daughter died of an overdose. I'll, I'll just reverse back to the beginning of me speaking out. The starting point of that um, was when she died of an overdose, I suspected that there was foul play. Um due to what I found on the scene, on the death scene. And um, uh, one fact of the case is that the FBI did open up a larger international case. They did talk about her. Jeff Sessions talked about her on um, a press in a press conference right. about the shutdown of an um, illicit um, dark web drug market called um, Alpha Bay. At the time, it was the largest one, and um, they uh, went to Thailand to arrest the owner, who allegedly died of a suicide hanging in the Thailand jail. They arrested two people in the United States, one of them a a Moldovian Russian, um, who also allegedly died in jail of a hanging, like Epstein, and so... Like the DC madam, she also allegedly died of a suicide hanging murder. Oh, did this person, the DC madam, die too? Yes, she did of a suicide hanging murder. But I, my beliefs are very different because I know firsthand um, the people that I was trafficked to, and I know the fraud that's in the media because of my right. my firsthand knowledge. Right. I don't believe those are actually suicides or murders. I don't believe they're deaths at all. I believe they're just evasion. Oh gosh, yeah, that's think. really beyond my scope. But um, that sounds very upsetting. I can imagine. And your daughter died. You think your daughter was poisoned because you you might expose the fraud going on? Is that part of the thing here? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Is that is that part of the case that you're? asking me to help you determine competency for, or is that something completely No, I, I apologize for going off on a tangent. Um, it's okay. I, I, was try, I was trying to explain to you the reason that I was concerned in this speeding traffic case about right. why um, a... My screen froze up. I hope you can still hear and see me, or at well, least hear see. me. Okay. Yes. Um, the reason that I was concerned about this case is because um, the facts that I'm stating to you about Jeff Ripstein, the DC madam, you know, right. Alpha Bay, my daughter, um, those related elements are true. And I am afraid that they would wish to deem me um, incompetent or insane in order right. to discredit the truth of the matters. Right. Because they're vastly different from what's being reported by the news and the Department of Justice themselves. So, Has anybody said to you that they thought that you were incompetent in any way? Um, I, I had a case in the past, but I have uh, litigation in that uh, area, yeah. so I'm not sure if I should speak on the issue right. because of the pending litigation. No, it's okay. It's okay. I just... Uh, I don't know why it's an issue right now. That's my concern. And these are obviously, I mean, it sounds like these are just misdemeanors, these traffic things. Is that correct? Yeah, um, they are misdemeanors and they may even be, I mean, that's what they're considered under, you know, statutes of 
state, you know, uh, admiralty law is as far as I know, um, if that information is correct. It's a difficult thing to study um, because of some, some of it being um, a little bit hidden from public knowledge. So uh, as far as I can tell, you know, as far as our natural constitutional rights, it constitutionally, uh, as far as I'm aware, we're allowed to live freely as long as we don't injure anybody or property so and I haven't done that at all I was you know on my way home and got a speeding ticket and now that's turning into uh, a potential you know um, institutionalization under you know false claims that I'm insane and that's what I was afraid of right has anybody threatened to institutionalize you at all well the fact that they've got the question the way they do when there is no, you know, legitimate basis for it is reason for me to believe that's a threat, a real threat. But you, nobody has said we want you to be evaluated by a psych. See, only as well, I guess a psychologist could evaluate it that way too. But you, generally, they use either a clinical psychologist or a psychiatrist. But um, uh, I don't know. I don't know why they would even question this is what I'm saying. Uh, that's my concern because you seem perfectly fine to me. Yeah. Um, um, well, I mean, you're understandably upset, Jessica. I mean, that's a reasonable thing to be upset. Um, it has been extremely difficult um, to such a degree that I have lost the majority of my hair just from the stress of, right. you know, knowing what's true, knowing what's being reported by media as truth, knowing the difference between the two, and um, realizing a level of corruption that I hadn't known existed um, right. is in place and in power, and I just want to live my life in peace. I haven't you know, right. hurt anybody, and I want, that's the reason I mentioned those um, the past circumstances, because it, the way it affects, the way I believe it's affecting the current case. Um, Joe Biden, I was trafficked by him to Mexico, um, Manzanillo, Mexico. Wait a minute. What? what? You what? mean Joe Biden wanted to have sex with you in, in Mexico or Mexico? Mexico. He took me to Mexico in 2003 for... A th- oh, President Joe Biden did? Yes, he did. I'm not lying. I'm not delusional. I'm not, I'm not so making it up. I'm not, I'm not saying that you are. I'm just wanting to make sure that I understand what you're saying. Correct. Yes, President. Well, he wasn't at the I time. Didn't. I was right. told at the time he was a senator. I didn't know that at the time either. Right. And I never watched the news, so I didn't pay much attention to uh, him in the media um, as vice president, I believe. Wasn't he vice president at one point? Under Obama. Yeah, That's what I... Obama. Yeah. See, I didn't pay any attention to the news for many, many years going back, actually, when I did, the last time I really ever listened to the news was on in like 2000, the year 2000, I would listen to NPR on the radio, but that's about it. I don't watch television. It's not interesting. And when you say you were trafficked, did you actually have sex with Joe Biden? I believe I did. I don't recall um, the bedroom or activities in the bedroom as much. As I do, um, I was interviewed about it and uh, libeled by some media people, and so there's a lawsuit um, about that as well. Um, but this is costing you a tremendous amount of money, Jessica. I mean, no, all these interviews, no? no? It's not costing No, I'm, but, well, prior to the DUI, uh, or the uh, speeding ticket that turned into a DUI, that's now turned into a potential institutionalization, um, I had registered and I actually paid for Liberty University's paralegal um, program, but I withdrew because theirs is not accredited. And I only found that out after, you know, attending um, and reading through the first chapter. Um, So I, I reapplied to another school that is accredited, that it is the school that I went to in the past for architecture. Can you tell me? Well, that was CUA. CUA. I mean, uh, no, actually, no, I didn't start off with CUA. Um, in the beginning, I started off with a community college called Anne Arundel Community College. Oh, yeah. That's sure, in that's Arnold. Right. 
Yep, it's a really sure. good school, and they're accredited for paralegal certification. So right. when I found that out, I decided, you know, I would go ahead and go back there um, rather than Liberty University because right. the the curriculum wasn't to my liking. They said it's sure. not so much what you know, it's kind of who you know, and that was literally in one of the textbooks. And I just don't agree with those type philosophies, whether that or not they may be true. I don't think that's proper to teach those sort of things, in my opinion. But anyways, I went back to, um, I was registered for, registering for um, Anne Arundel Community College paralegal certification. And uh, the DUI circumvented all that money has gone to that attorney that did nothing but kick the, you know, can down the road and send me up the stream to the circuit court. Um, all of his advice was bad. Everything that he has said has been proven to be untrue, right. including, you know, him telling me that a remote hearing was absolutely impossible. And then they went ahead and granted it. But I am deathly afraid of any more to do with any of these state people that they have got, like, you know, they're hooking me and I don't know how to get free of this. Right. Let's, when you say these state people, can you tell me what you mean by that? Um, a lot of, yeah, a lot of the people I was trafficked to are lawyers, um, and judges. So this happened, this happened more than once, is that correct? Yeah, I mean, I can t- I stayed trafficked for a long time because it's not just run by the one agency. Like the handler that I have right now, this is, I can't prove these things because I don't have access to, you know, the intelligence information that would be required to show it. But I just know from, you know, being a human being that there's something more going on than just what meets the eye. The handler, right. yeah. like. Now, why, why are you choosing to participate in that now? Oh, I don't. I absolutely do not, and I haven't. Well, but, 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 I'm sorry to be blunt, but yeah. have you had sex recently with anybody that paid to have sex with you? No, no, no. Not at all. And I don't want to, and I never wanted to in the first place okay. ever in my life. But were you, were you coerced into having sex with somebody that you didn't want to have sex with? When, yes, in the past I have been, yes, often okay. and regularly and for my own survival and my children's care, yeah. You mean just to get money? To, yeah, pay bills. And when I was, right. I was moved from Catholic University where I had an apartment to right. by the police because I called the police on somebody that police have called a um, federal agent, I believe is what he said, the words he used. Um, it, they said it was for my safety to move, um, but I believe that, I, I know it sounds, I hope I don't, I, I hope that you have some understanding well, I, of I don't, No, I don't, I'm not judging things. you at all. I'm just trying to get the facts straight. That's yeah. all. That's all. I don't what. Well, if it's true or false, really doesn't matter to me. I just want to get the story straight, okay? Yeah. And if it's all true, I'm not judging you at all. Don't no, worry. it's not that I... Well, the problem is that I know without a doubt that I never, ever wanted to be involved in trafficking at all. I never wanted right. to be... I was at Catholic University working on my bachelor's degree and was an extremely good, you know, student because that was my aspiration in life. Right. was to be able okay. to provide for my children in a classical means, not through the trafficking that they have right. forced on me. It was absolutely through fraud, force, and coercion, just like the uh, law describes. Right. Um, what somebody might say, though, is that you had a choice to continue. What? Um, in what way were you coerced? I'm not questioning that. I'm just asking, how did they do it? Did they say they were going to? Make trouble for you in some way, or you know, how? it's it's more of an intuitive sense um, that I had initially. I'm just going to look up the word coerce, so I, I'm sure I'm, I know well, the definition. Coercion, well, basically, what it means is that you didn't have a choice; you were being forced to do something. Yeah, it says pressure, bring pre- bring pressure to bear, um, compel, right. push, force. Yeah, right. well. It, the, in the first instance, when I went on the interview, I was alone in a house with a man. And I had no idea that the ad had entailed anything to do with sex at all. I had no clue about that from the ad itself. 
doing. The, the small fact that may have been perceived in that way, I assumed I would recognize a massage parlor is what I thought it could potentially be because the ad said um, it had it said uh, must have uh, two years education, must be at least 23 years old, and must have a proportionate body. And the proportionate body part, I remember thinking for a moment um, about listening to the Grease Man on my mom's radio and him talking about massage parlors. And I was thinking, I wonder if it's that And while I was reading the ad. And I was like, I would know it if it was that. And I went ahead and answered it because I needed a job. I was working under the table. What is a proportionate body? Does that mean big breasts, smaller no. hips? Or I, I assumed I assumed just healthy is what I thought. That's what I thought it meant healthy, you know, not somebody that was um, imbalanced. So that's the way I took it. And I had worked at an architectural firm in Annapolis and the people there were fairly attractive and well-groomed and proportionate, you know. Um, and so I thought it may be something like that. So I was willing to see what it was about. And I thought if it was some kind of a CD operation, like a massage parlor, I would know. But this wasn't right. look. This didn't look like that at all. It didn't appear that way. Once you know, he told me about the contract, um, and he, he said explicitly that it didn't entail. It didn't have anything to do with sex. I signed right. it, but in the back of my head, I remember what I was thinking. I was thinking when I leave here, I'm going to call that woman back and let her know I'm not interested in this. But right. I, I, I'm not a person that likes to confront people face to face. At least in the past, you know, at, at that age. Um, I've, I've always been kind of shy and more demure. What, so, what age are we talking about? When, yeah, how old were you? When I was 23. Okay. And as far as I know, that the law still applies. If what do you mean? I don't know. What the law of uh, sex. Sorry about these jets. Sorry. Okay. I live under, <laughs> I live, <clears throat> excuse me. I live under a landing strip for NASA. Okay. So I get the jets coming through here, not just, you know, planes like way far away. They come right over me, like very close to me, to my, to my, the house where I, I reside occasionally. So, um, I apologize for that uh, interruption, but could you remind me what I was? Well, into? the main thing is that I need to know is how you were coerced. Okay, because what's not going to hold up is thinking that it was something that was assumed or if there was no specific pressure well, to worship, and they will, then the court will say, but this was a choice that you made. No, See? it wasn't. It wasn't. I, mean, I was trying to leave, but I was okay. in a house with a man by himself. And okay. when he asked me if I wanted to sit down and have wine, I didn't. But I didn't feel safe to say no. I just don't feel safe in those environments. Did you, did you end up having sex with that man? Yes, that's what ended up happening. But I didn't feel like it was mutual, uh, okay. agreed upon. It felt very much. Well, you, feel, you feel it was more rape. Right? Yes, yeah. Okay. yeah. And no, I had been raped well, in the past by a, um, a counselor that I was forced to see by the courts. Um, okay. Yeah. Did you file a complaint with the courts about that? Yeah, I wore a wire in to make sure that, you know, it yeah. was exposed what he was doing because it was the right. same thing. And they actually dropped the charges of him being a government agent, even though I was forced to go to see him and he was doing it to other people. It was I wasn't the first person. When you said drop the charges, government agent, I don't understand what that means. Tell me what that means. Because well, what does government agent have to do with it? Well, see, I was mandated by a court order to see this right. man, and nice. I was put in a room alone with him. Right. Um, and uh, that's when he raped me. And when I told him, you know, to stop, he said that if I didn't do it, that he was going to have my son taken by CPS. What's CPS mean? Um, Child Protective oh, Services. Okay. Yeah, I got it, got it. How many kids do you have, Jessica? Alive, living children, oh, I suppose. Right. Yeah, well, how many total, living and going? How many did you have? Um, well, I gave birth to um, two living children. Yeah. I have one remaining living child. Right. And where is he or she? 
Um, well, he's local. I just prefer not to disclose because oh, that's okay. his that's privacy. Okay. Of course. Can you tell me how old he is? Yeah, he's um, up in age. He's he's almost 30. He's getting close to 30. I just... Oh, I, I, how old are you, Jessica? 45. Oh, yeah, mentioned that, right. 45. Yeah. So you were pretty young when you had him, right? I was. I was 16 when I got pregnant with him. Yeah. Oh, my God. And the father has not been involved at all. Not at all. No, and he also passed away um, the month after my daughter um, passed away. He passed away also. Um, gosh, it's a really thick case. Um, yeah, I, I just don't want to be mislabeled. I'm sorry to interrupt. The, the, the goal is to not be mislabeled as insane when I am absolutely oh, 100% lucid and coherent. I was trying to get, you know, a certification in law itself so that I could file my own lawsuits to prove my cases. Right. I, I would advise you not to do that. I would advise you to get a good uh, civil rights group like the ACLU or a liberty group that would take it for free. I've contacted, I mean... I apologize for interjecting again, but I, I've been, you know, searching. I've contacted. It has got to be. I would. I'm guess. I'm guessing, but I would say it's got to be in the hundreds of people, organizations, agencies. I know that what I'm saying is true. A lot of people have difficulty believing the facts about sex trafficking because they're not being told the truth by the media. So right. a large majority of the people believe things that aren't necessarily true or only a little part of the truth and when I'm explaining the part that I know to be true and they're denying it people right. are denying me help and in addition to that people know that um, I'm outnumbered in my sure. not so much in my beliefs I think if people had the opportunity to hear why I believe what I believe and what I do know is true or even to see right. the facts and the proof they wouldn't right. disbelieve me at all and people I and certain would be on my side rather than the opposing right. side that is advocating for this type of activity. What you're going to need is concrete proof of each uh, allegation. Well, uh, see, I'm not saying that for me. I'm saying that the court would say, where's the proof? But in my opinion, I, I don't, I have to discount their own, you know, agenda because I know without doubt that my, yeah, but I'm just, I understand that, Jessica. Yeah. That won't hold up in court. Is what I'm saying. I, I understand, but you know, it, the people's opinions do matter. You know, I it, agree. I'm 100 so percent in agreement. I, I I really have no control over the fact that they have, you know, stolen evidence that I would have otherwise. And do you have evidence that they stole that? Uh, you have proof that they stole it. The please? reason I'm saying that is because yeah. you're going to be dismissed as paranoid. If you don't have the evidence. Well, see, that's the problem, is that I'm not. And that these things are true. These things have I happened to me. And it's... I understand. I, I believe you. Yeah. I believe you, Jessica. Well, I'm, I'm trying to look at this from your adversary's point of view. Yeah. And I know what they're going to say. They're going to say, show me the beef. Show me okay. the proof. That's okay? fine. But they, that's at the same time, aren't required to show any proof of anything. I think it's unfair. I completely agree with you. You know, like they say, I'm just trying to keep. I'm trying to keep you out of a hospital <laughs> called a prison or a prison called a hospital. Okay, that's what, that's what I'm saying. And so you have to know the game. And if you say certain things or you don't say certain things, then they're likely to make life difficult for you. That's all I'm saying. Oh, they have. I'm just. I'm, just trying I'm to done help. talking. I'm done speaking out. I just went out of the whole situation. I've learned my lesson now. I didn't know it going into it that me speaking out was not going to be welcomed by the law enforcement community. I thought that, you know, there were good guys within the law enforcement that would provide the proof for me because I know it exists. And I right. didn't know the, um, the way things worked. I found out so much in the last, you know, four right. years since I began speaking out. Um, so I have matured significantly since you know, this, since speaking out, that was in September of uh, 2019. Right. 
when you say you spoke out, was that in the newspaper or on some media? Yeah, just what? regular media. What's available to, uh, you know, the general public um, and somebody and like did me. They, did they publish that at all? The, the general public did. Yeah, they, they, re, they shared it and they got, you know, at least I know of, I believe, I know for certain I've seen one um, person that got a million views on one of the videos. But the media, they're involved in this scheme of... You see, when you say that, again, all I'm not trying to give you a hard time. I'm just trying to protect you, okay? And what I, by protecting you, I mean we've got to anticipate what they are going to use against you. That's all I'm saying. Okay? And you have to have some evidence that is generally considered evidence. Of truth. Well, I mean, to any reasonable, you know, intelligent person, if they look at the, my handler and him admitting, you know, in writing what he's admitted to is um, seeing my phone number in the WikiLeaks documents before they were deleted um, and that he knew for certain that I worked for the DC Madam and that that's what he calls it works, you know, but. What is, and the, what is a handler? I, don't, I mean, I know that general, but what does it mean in this particular context? Well, just? one, one instance in, in, for the reason that I call him a handler is that my children and I were living in a marina within my means of, you know, income. And so I had worked this way out for us to live. And I knew of a decade in the past that people had lived in the same um, marina. And so we were living there and it was not even, I'd say maybe a month or two after we were living there that the state came in and kicked everybody out. And then as soon as they did that, the marina was developed into a restaurant and a resort. And some, but wouldn't they have the right to do that? It does. It, isn't it possible that there was something behind that to do with uh, people who are trafficking women and sh their that children? Certainly, that certainly could be. That I'm become not involved in real estate. And that's very yeah. similar to what's happening to me here. But regardless, the, the what I was trying to get to about why I call my handler a handler is because right. when I was moved from there and me and my children moved into a hotel, he suggested right. out of the blue without me bringing it up. Right. Um, that my daughter moved to Florida and she moved. My aunt lived in Florida one hour away from Je where Jeffrey Epstein lived when she was 12 years old. And so I believe what happened to her while she was there and out of my supervision was likely that she was trafficked and videos have a video of somebody who looks identical to her has a lot of the same, um, Thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you. Sometimes I get stuck because I'm trying to, yeah, I don't want to go on. into too much detail because I'll start describing the hair and the dye and all this stuff, no, no, no. size and everything. But yeah, features. Thank you. Um, as my daughter uh, with a man who looks identical to Joe Biden. And so it's, it's hard to know from my, you know, lowly place in life, you know, uh, whether that is my daughter whether that happened to her while she was in Florida. Um, I, let me just give you this advice. Uh, you're not going to like it. I think in a general sense, you need to drop everything. I know. That's what I'd like to do, too. <laughs> but I'm and, not uh, willing to go. Because, well, if you don't drop it, they probably are going to put you in a hospital. Yeah. That's... And you don't want to go there. Right. I know don't... that. I know. It's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah, I know. I don't think I can't get you out. It's very hard to get people out of that. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah. So when you make allegations like you are, I'm not saying they're false. I don't know whether they're true or false. I don't know. You seem like an honest person. I'm not questioning that. All I'm saying is, if I look at what you're saying from their point of view, they're going to say that you're paranoid, and they're probably going to say makes no sense at all, that you're paranoid schizophrenic, which is not true. I'm just saying I know how they act. I've taught this stuff mm -hmm. for years. And you don't want to go down that road because it's a mess. I know that. It's, 
much. Yeah, I agree. That's why I, I was mean, trying I to. Feel, I know you feel you feel wrong. I know that. Oh yeah, totally. But I don't know. Everything how much has been taken from me. My from my education to one of my children. It's right. tough it's to have very, to deal with. Yeah. Even absolutely. even now with what I'm left with, um, you know, that's slowly being taken as well. Even my appearance has changed and that is due to the stress. Um, right. But I have finally gotten to the point where I'm willing and able to say, okay, I give up. I, you okay. win. Like I tried, I did everything right. I could and let so it go. What's next? What is next? Then? I don't know how to let it go. I don't know how to get them to, resolve the matter with, to do with the uh, speeding ticket. Ap I apologize for tearing up. I'm, I'm, I'm cycling. So I get a little bit more emotional in that period. Yeah. But why not just pay the fine, the penalty and get out? I mean, what's the penalty? <laughs> well, you know, the, according to their uh, statutes, it says that there's a maximum, I believe on the charge because it wouldn't be considered a, habitual offense um, or a subsequent, I'm not sure how they describe it, um, but I believe the maximum, uh, they're saying that there's jail time. Otherwise, I would have paid it. There's a year, a potential oh, year I in jail. There is. Did they offer to give you a public defender at all? Um, not yet. They haven't. I, I kind of resist that sort of thing because I've had such sure. bad experiences with attorneys. Right, but you're going to need somebody to help you because it's not, I understand you have a right to but I don't think that's a good idea for you to do. Well, because, the, go ahead. Um, my only concern is that, you know, I've hired somebody to right. do that. And for whatever reason, he didn't do what he was hired to do, even the basic things. And right. so I have a difficult time trusting that a public defender will. Sure. Um, I, I understand. You know, because I, you know, don't um, believe the state, anybody working for the state would have the ability to work against the state. Oh, I do. Oh, we got lost. I don't got know. disconnected. I, I, it wasn't on my end. Something disconnected. Yeah, I got an error message on the side. Um, I'm just using a cell phone, and so it could have been. Well, that should work as long as sometimes when another call comes in, it knocks it out. Um, that could have been. Right. Yeah, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I, you no, know, it's okay. I'm glad that we're talking about it. I want to give you some advice that is a way for you to protect yourself. I believe that you have been wronged. I, I believe that. I just think sometimes it's better to, to, to let go and live life. That's what I want. Than to keep fighting this because it's like fighting with uh, like a monster that yeah. just keeps really getting you. Yeah, uh, that's how it's here. felt. I can tell you what they're going to say to you. They're going to say that you are paranoid, that you don't have um, evidence to support you. But don't don't argue with me. I'm not saying that you are paranoid. I'm just saying what they're going to say. And you want to avoid that, Jessica. You don't want to do that. Like when I used to teach, my students learned all about these kinds of issues. And so they would challenge the police and end up in the hospital and argue with the psychiatrist and everything. In real life? Oh, yeah. Oh, really? 
and then they oh would call God. me up and they said, everything you said was right, Professor. <laughs> Bastards are crooks and blah, blah, blah. And I said, you need to stop arguing with them if you want to get out of the hospital. Right. And they go, oh, yeah, right. And I said, you just need a bigger army. You can't just do it by yourself. You know? I mean, what I do, teaching people and writing is one thing. You know, there's an old saying, uh, the doctor who treats himself has a fool for a patient, you know? Same thing with the lawyer. You can't you can't defend yourself in these situations, even though you're right. Like, you know, that's why good lawyers, you know what the first thing they say to their, their client is, shut up. Don't say anything. You hear it all the time, even in TV, on TV shows and all that. So... But I, I think the best thing for you, Jessica, is to just say, how can I get out of this to the state? What's the next thing the state wants right now? Do they want you to show up someplace? Uh, well, they're go- probably going to, but of course I'm going to resist that because I'm definitely afraid of them. I'm afraid of them, you know, abducting me with handcuffs, like putting me in a cage. But... On what basis would they do that? I don't understand why they would do that. Well, what I was told by one of the attorneys that I spoke to is that if I didn't get, um, if I didn't do the competency evaluation, which I object to, it's not, right. it's not, there's no proof, there's no reason for for having one in the first place. The attorney uh, said that I called him 12 times, and that's untrue. I called him twice. So it's based on a lie. I don't see how they get away. I mean, it's not like I don't see it. I see how they get away with it, you know, but legitimately they're lying and there is no real reason for the, I'm just explaining why I fight them so hard because I'm really passionate right. about right and wrong. And I agree with you. I'm, I'm in agreement with you. I just want to help you to protect yourself the best way you can be right and in jail. Yeah. And, I might have heard that before. (laughs) You know, I would take the way out if they gave it to me. I just haven't seen. I usually get a good feel for they're they're letting me go. You know, I've. I've, What's the next? I don't understand what the next thing is that they want. What is the state want right now? Did they give you a letter that said you had to show up? Well, see, that's the reason why I mentioned that they may want me to show up is because the attorney that I spoke with about hiring him. Um, he, he was giving me the idea that they might, um, ask me to show up in court. They might not continue on with these remote hearings and, you know, I'm fighting against that because there's no reason for me to show up unless they intend to arrest me. There's no reason for me to appear in person. So if you don't show up, what will they do? You don't know. Well, I'd assume, well, what he said, if I didn't, you know, um, submit to the competency evaluation or say I was not to show up to court, he said that they would put a warrant out for my arrest. Yeah. See, I just don't know the law on this stuff, so. I apologize for my cigarette. I don't care about that. Oh, thank you. I didn't ask while we were offline together, so I went ahead and. can't smell the smoke. (laughs) Yeah, it's great. I like it. One of the great things about the remote. Yeah, it's nice. Um, I mean, you meet the first, you meet the first criteria. You understand the charges that are brought against you. Yeah, I okay? do. The second is you don't seem to be able to assist counsel with your defense. You understand that? That's what the second criteria is. I think you could, but I think you choose not to. And I'm afraid that that's going to you're going to shoot yourself in the foot on that. I know that you've had bad attorneys. And the third thing is, do you understand the proceedings in the court? I think you do. But the second one will probably say they'll they'll be stumped on that. Yes, you do have a right to defend yourself. Do I think that's a good idea? No, I don't. Um, and it's probably has a lot to do with how passionate you feel about justice and all that. And that's I share those feelings, but I just don't think that's the way of keeping you out of a prison called a hospital. And that's the bottom line. You want to get out of that, right? So my suggestion is that um, don't get 
I mean, first of all, they're probably not going to accept me as um, the person they want to have a side that you are confident to stand by. Well, I mean, yeah. they wouldn't have a choice if, you know, you submitted a uh, evaluation. They would have to. Well, at this point, I can't make the determination regarding the second criteria. Are you able to assist counsel with your defense? You seem competent enough to do that, but it's not working. You're not going along with a lawyer. And I understand that they're not good, but you have to have some attorney. And I don't think that you should defend yourself, Jessica. It's just not a good scene. Because as soon as you start talking about plots against you and all this other stuff, they're going to say you're nuts. Well, they're, Even, yeah, they're, they're, right. Even though you may be right, they're going to say that. I realize that they'll say what they have to say, you know, to shut me down and to right. pretend that what I'm saying isn't true. Um, you know, I would be willing to work with an attorney if they could be reasonable. I mean, I've put the interlock in, you know. What is that? It's like an alcohol blower monitor so that there's no chance that I'm driving my vehicle with any alcohol in my system because that's their concern, the public safety. So I tried to alleviate their concern, you know, by what I consider to be reasonable, even though it costs money. And I've, you know, I've attempted to do their, um, you know, drug or alcohol rehabilitation educations, education classes. Um, I just, I those things are bullshit. I yeah, know. I just disagreed about like uh, the criteria of the DSM right. and whether or not I met the criteria for uh, well, I, alcohol I, abuse. Listen, I'm, the one, I'm one of the biggest critics yeah. of the DSM. Yeah. I debated the author of the DSM. Did you? He, he agreed that it was bullshit. <laughs> yeah. It's on the internet. You can see it. Yeah, I'll have to look, look for it. Me. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, then, well, I'll see if I can send it to you. Oh, oh great. A link. I'd love this to see is, it. I mean, I'm curious the about author, this stuff also. The, well, the authors of the DSM, the chairman of the of the people that wrote that, said this whole thing is bullshit. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, I, I'm, you have a fact on your side here, but again, I wouldn't, I would not fight on that basis. I would say, how much do I pay? What do you want me to do? <laughs> That's that's what I tried to do in the first place, and I couldn't get them to put on paper that they were not going to, because they, I mean, to put it, I don't know what other term to use, but, like, they kept leaving loopholes where they could institutionalize me, you know, through probation or through um, uh, this, like, a competency evaluation. I wanted the district attorney to agree, and still, even if the district attorney was to agree in writing which is what I wanted, which is what I was asking for, um, that there would be no jail time and no inpatient, you know, right. type. Well, there's no reason for any inpatient. And, um, again, I would, I strongly advise you to do the following things. And this is, I know you're not going to like it, but I just am concerned about your well-being. And that is, one, for the three criteria for competency, one, Make it very clear that you understand the charges that are brought against you. Mm-hmm. And the second thing, say, I would love to be able to work with an attorney to help my case. Just say that much, as many times. And don't fire any more attorneys unless you feel like they're really doing you harm or asking you to do something that you want. Yeah. And, uh, and the third thing is, that's my specify um, that you understand the proceedings of this case. And then once you say those th- see those three things in a concise way, Jessica, I'm sure that they'll let it go. But do not get into, don't ever say that you were trafficked to Joe Biden. If you say you were trafficked to Joe Biden, they're going to say that you're paranoid and that's the end of it. Yeah, I already, I, I filed a motion today with, um, that claim that it's not actually a claim it's actually you know my truth the experience my experience um right but that's not going to hold up in court you've got to do what's going to hold up in court in order for you to be free yeah i that's didn't realize right. that i had to have proof i thought that you know that law enforcement to was gonna so, yeah my was no. one of the first questions my brother asked me was why would you why would you tell 
the truth if you didn't have proof of it. Now, I exactly. did not know I needed it. I really had a lot more faith in law enforcement. Don't. Don't have any faith. <clears throat> no. Um, so the, the circumstances currently are that um, I have found a, a situation that I haven't in the past where somebody that I would like to spend long term, the foreseeable long term future with has invited me into their lives. And I would like to be able to do that. And to he, this person has some similar type experiences with the government and knows that it's not, it, it's not possible to um, fight them. And so his, um, he's advocating for me to shut down everything which is what I would like to do. What does that mean, shut down? Take everything that I've placed on the media, off the media. I know that... Oh, yes, absolutely. Oh, I know I know. some of it will remain, but I, I've kind of been hesitant because I don't want to give up those things and, and then allow them to go ahead and do what they were going to do anyway, you know? I don't think that they will, but I know... Listen, I've dealt with people that have done things that they regretted. It's just terrible, and they can't get it. They can't stop it. You know? um, but that's what I'm saying. I'm afraid. I'm afraid because I'm not certain. But which, in which way do you mean that I re- regret what I've done as far as place the truth out to the public? Well, well, yeah, because the truth out there is not going to help you. You know. Um, I have I no idea. <laughs> That I was getting myself into what I did when I spoke out. And what I meant by speaking out was, yeah, I published a video of myself um, explaining that Jeffrey Epstein, that I was trafficked to him by the DC Madam. And is that on, is that in the public now? Um, I'm not, well, I know that if they didn't want it to be, they could, you know, slowly. Who, who, who published that? Uh, I published it myself, but it's been shared by others. And but do you understand, like, how would somebody know that this, that they saw, how did they see this? I don't, I'm not interested in seeing it. But yeah. Um, no. Well, it was on TikTok. That's where, uh, yeah, some of the views got a million views for each video. Right. Um, Twitter is where I started off with all of this stuff. I mean, I think all that stuff is really dangerous. Yep. It's just really dangerous because... It starts snowballing. You show some private part of yourself psychologically, emotionally, and the next thing you know, it's everybody knows. And you can't get rid of it. Oh, I know. And I've even had um, it affect me in a way that I hadn't before where, you know, somebody somebody that I'm interested in, their own family members looked at me in the way that the people who have committed these crimes against me want people to imagine things are as if I was willing, as if I was doing what I did for money. And even though that is true to this extent, it's not based on the entire truth. It wasn't because I needed money. It was because I was put into that position to need money. Well, somebody's going to say that's not true. You could have always gotten out of it. That's what they'll say. I'm not saying that, but that's what people will count. I just really think you you should not say anything about Jeffrey Epstein. You shouldn't say anything about being trafficked, about Joe Biden. Don't say anything about that, whether it's true or not, because they're only going to use it against you, and you're gonna they're going to say that you're paranoid. They're going to say that you're crazy. And I just, you know, it's still I, I know that I know that blows your mind, but that's it does. That's, that's, that's the truth. That's the truth about the government. Yeah. Well, I've, I've witnessed it firsthand. It's still, right. I but mean. Don't do it. Don't do any of it anymore. Well, I would like to know, you know, precisely how to get out of it unscathed any further, you know. Well, because it's the only way that, I mean, first of all, I don't know the law. So, except a very cursory, basic thing. Because I'm just a psychologist. That's different. And um, so you should talk to something like the American Civil Liberties Union about um, some pro bono, actually some law school schools offer free advice on things like this. For example, does Catholic University have a law school? It does, doesn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah. I would go there because they often have a clinic 
that offers help to people like yourself. And that means that they give advice advice about what to do. You don't sign a contract with them. They're just going to say, we think that you ought to do X, Y, and Z. And uh, there's no reason to think that they would harm you in any way there. Right. I just don't... But even with them, Jessica, don't say anything about how you were trafficked with Joe Biden and all these other people. Don't say it, because they'll use that against you. Somebody will, and they'll say, she's obviously crazy, and that's the end of it. I, I still haven't quite gained, I haven't quite gained understanding on how people can just make that claim when they when I know they don't know that well, what a, they're a, saying. My teachers used to tell a story. He said a man fell in a well and he couldn't get out of the well. And he kept calling, help, help. And somebody came along and said, what's going on? And he said, I fell down in this well and I need to get out. And the person threw down a rope and said, climb up the rope and get out. And the person in the well said, why did I end up in the well? Who threw me in the well? And the person with the rope said, I don't know. Just get out of the well. Grab onto the rope and get out. And what I'm trying to say is, use a rope that's available. And a law clinic is a rope to get out. You want to get out. You don't want to argue the right and wrong of it. Don't argue the right and wrong of it. I'm very serious about this, Jessica, because you're not going to win on your own. You're not going to win on your own. Well, I mean, I... I would I would do exactly what I'm telling you to do. Yeah, I saw that today when I filed the motion, um, right. and I I did put in there that I was trafficked to Joe Biden, and that it causes me concern that. Um, Who did you wait? That did that go to the court? Yeah. Well, that was a mistake. That was a huge mistake, and they're going to use it against you. So if I were you, I would retract that statement if you can, and say, I uh, I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, I shouldn't have said that. Don't. Well, what 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 has happened that I found out um, is that the motion, um, I forget the word that they used, it began with an R, but it is, it, it has been rejected basically because I didn't, uh, you know, put my address and my phone number and email. Oh, that's, then that's good news. Yeah, I was going to, I was trying to let you know there was, it's, there's a small little like lining to it right. that I made a mistake on it. So right. it, they can technically reject it and pretend they never saw it. Okay, well then just go with that. Just yeah. go with that. Yeah. You don't want to go down that route. You don't. I don't. Do I just want out of all of this, but it's well, like... That's what I'm saying, and the thing to do is uh, go to a law clinic and say, how can I get out of this? Okay? And do not say anything about how people have plotted against you and done all these X, Y, and Z things. Don't say it, because it'll hurt you. I'm telling you, it's going to hurt you. And you've got to do what they say. They're going to say, keep your mouth shut, Jessica. Do this. Grab onto this rope and climb out. And don't don't start questioning the whole thing right now. Once you're out and free, you can, you can go after them if you want. Write a story about the whole thing. Bust them. But don't do it while they still have power over you. Well, I don't see when they won't have power over you. Just don't see how that's possible. Well, then you're, what you're saying is that there's no hope, right? Well, I mean, in this case, you know, it, it should not have turned into what it did. Well, but that, but that's my point, is don't even think in terms of what should and shouldn't happen. You want to be free. You want to be free, right? Yeah. You don't want a verdict <clears throat> against the government that says, P.S., the government was guilty of X, Y, and Z, right? Mm-hmm. If you want to do that, then go to school and learn how to do it. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do before right. this happened. I, I wanted to try and learn how to get, you know, my motions right. accepted, at least, you know, learn their procedures so that I knew. That's a perfectly reasonable thing to do. But when they're when they're coming down on you, don't do it right then. Yeah, I just... And, and you're going to have to always make, whenever you make an allegation or accusation, you're going to have to show evidence. If you don't show evidence, they're going to say you're crazy. That's all there is to it. Yeah. Well, the evidence that I had it mostly has been removed because of the, you know, the how long it's been since I was trafficked and came to realize 
I hadn't really looked back on any of it in the last 20 years until what happened to my daughter happened. And I started questioning how we got there right. in the first place and looking back into the DC Madam articles and that sort of thing. And that's how it. Well, don't, don't touch that again. Just stay away from any of that. And if you can take down any of the stuff that you put up, take it down, delete it. I don't know how to do any of that, but you just want to get all of that stuff down and out. That's what, it, it again. that's what, yeah, I consider just deleting the accounts to see if that may have any. Oh, yeah, sure, go ahead. And don't tell anybody that you're deleting it. Just delete it. Yep. It's just that there's that fear factor that, like, I will do that and the same thing that I expect them to do because I'm continuing to fight them. Don't continue to fight them. Just give in. See, I'm a martial artist for many, many years. One of the things about martial arts is you don't box back. You take their energy and you use it to your advantage. Okay? And many times that means giving in to win. We have a saying, give in and win. Okay? You need to give in and win. If they say, you know, you're a bad person or whatever, Say, yes, we all are in some ways, right? Don't fight it. Don't fight it. If they say that you were busted for DWI and there's evidence that you were, then go ahead and pay the penalty. You'll get it You'll get it over with. Yeah, but the penalty that they seem to want is incarceration. No, there's no reason they're going to do that for that kind of offense. That's why you need to talk to a law clinic. They're, they're, it's just, that's an unreasonable fear. And I can't answer that legally. That's why you've got to go to a law clinic or someplace that will give you free, free legal advice. Yeah, the only reason that I say that is because it's written in the law, and I expect because I'm fighting them for them to, you know, but use the furthest, uh, that, the, that the penalty is up to one year in jail. So I... Well, but you're not the judge in this case. You don't know what they're going to do. No, but the judge seems to have a very serious disliking for me. Well, well, that may or may not be, but don't argue with them. I mean, that's why you've got to go to the law clinic. That's the only hope that you have. You've got to let them help you. If you defend yourself, you're going to get even deeper, Jessica. I'm trying to help you here. Yeah, I believe you. Grab onto, grab onto that rope and climb out. Don't question. Don't talk about how evil they were. All that other stuff. Just get out of the well. <laughs> yeah, that I will do my best to do. I don't think it will help you for me to write a letter, although I would certainly do that. Okay. But the second criteria uh, about are you able to assist counsel with your defense, I don't think I could write a letter that would indicate that you are able to do that. Well, that's what I'm agreeing to. That's what I'm, I'm you know, concluding with this meeting is that I would agree to do that. I know how to do that. I know how not then, to do that. Well then, and that's why you need to help get the clinic to help you find the right attorney, whether that's a public right. defender or whatever. They have to protect your rights. That's all there is to it. Right, but I'm not sure why you would not be willing to say that when I'm telling you that's what I'd be willing to do to get out of it. Because it's a promise. I don't see evidence that it's gone on. I can't say, I think you will do it. It's not going to help you, and they might use it against you. That they're going to say, he's a psychologist. They're going to try to undermine it. And then they're going to come back and hit you harder. If, if the law clinic says Taylor's opinion might help you, then I'll do what they say. But well, I, don't, I don't want to hurt you. I don't want you to get hurt in that process. Yeah, I just assumed or presumed that if you, had, if you wrote a letter that said that I was willing to work with an attorney, um, which I am, Right. I, don't think that, I don't think that that will help you. To I work with an attorney? Just, I think just working with an attorney will help you. That's, yeah. I know that you've tried it. I understand it. You've had, look, I've had bad experiences with attorneys. I hate attorneys. Mm -hmm. they just a, and my daughter's an attorney. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's a bind for me. But there are good people out there. Yeah, I know that. And yeah. uh, uh, you've got to find the right one. I mean, I've had... I've tried to have malpractice cases gone on because I was mistreated by a physical therapist. I almost had my right foot amputated. 
you know, because I broke it and she did something wrong. And the lawyer said, you're right, it was malpractice and we're not going to help you on the case. And I go, well, what do I do? And they say, well, there's nothing you can do. You know, I mean, I've gone through this several times. Well, I just don't, I don't understand why it is that you wouldn't want to help me from being put into an institution. I do want to help you. But, being I'm able to... that, but what I'm saying, I would like to help you. I'm saying the best way to help you right now is to go to the law clinic first and see what they say. Well, but I think first what's coming up is the competency evaluation. That's the first thing. I, can't make, I cannot make the determination because I've not seen how you work I've seen some bad examples, and it sounds like you're sincere, but I can't make... They're going to say, how do you know that she can assist attorney with her def- with her defense? I don't know. So I'm not going to vouch for that when I don't know. That's why I think if you go to the law clinic first and they say, oh, well, you just need to do this and that, talk to Dr. Shaler about this and that, then fine. But I don't want to presume to know what the law is and what the best way is to do it work with the law. I just don't want to. Because I don't, don't, they could get very angry and make things worse for you. I Listen, I've devoted most of my life to trying to get people away from being committed. I'm working on my 10th book right now about how this is an unconstitutional process. And I think ultimately that's the way you've got to go. But you don't want to go that way while the state is coming after you. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's not the right time, Jessica. First thing is you got to get free. I mean, what's your? Do you have an objection to going to a law clinic and asking what their opinion is? No, I don't have any objection to that. Um, that's what I'm planning to do tomorrow. It's too late to get any of that done today, but I'll do that tomorrow. Well, that's good. Yeah. Um, I mean, what I would do, and I've done in the past, is go to. The ACLU, I, I helped the ACLU in a very important case, and we won. Uh, another one, there's another group that's a libertarian organization. I forget how it's, what it's called. Um, well, if you, if you search um, libertarian public service legal help, something like that, it'll pop up. Okay. One is called the oh, it's called the Institute for Justice. Okay, mm-hmm. they take cases like this. Ask them if you can meet and explain your case with them. I, okay? I, mean, I, I might I might have already spoke to them already and and written to them. I think. Um, what they say? I don't think I heard anything back from them. I, I'm, well, then you have to pursue it. You yeah. Just have to say, Look, I'm knocking at the door here. I want to talk to you. Right. I forget the woman. She, they had her yeah, case. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know the people there anymore, but, but I know that they've done good work. Um, but I would caution you on making claims about how President Biden, if you say President Biden is involved in trafficking you, you're going to be, they're not going to listen to you. I, I mean, don't know who people think that these guys are having sex it's with. It they... doesn't matter. They're just, that's just the way the world works right now. They're going to say you're nuts. So, you know, I'm sorry. If that happened, that's horrible. Yeah, that is but, but, but don't say it. If you want to save yourself right now, don't say it. Get the help first. Grab the rope first. Yeah, I don't see um, where the help is. I mean, I, I know that you're saying to go to a law clinic, but the, right. first, the first point of order is the... Uh, Oh, shit. Did I hang up on you? Damn it. I apologize. That time it was me. There is a, yep. for almost an hour and a half. So yeah. would you please do what I'm suggesting right now? And you're welcome to tell me how it turned out with the yeah. uh, clinics, okay? Yeah, I'll call the Catholic University tomorrow. Um, Whichever one gives you help, just do that first. 
and then if they want to talk to me, I'd be happy to talk to them. But I want to take the best course of action for you. That's what I'm saying. Well, and I mean, me write a letter out of the blue is not the best course of action right now. I mean, it's that's just, I, that's what I would yeah. pay somebody to. You know, no. I don't know if I owe you for this um, no, you don't session or not. No, no, you don't owe me anything. Um, okay? I would I've thank you. I've not been hired by you. Don't worry about that. I don't. I don't want, nor do I need your money. I want you to be happy and free, and that's why I'm saying contact these clinics first. Do what they say. Okay, but then what do I tell them about meeting with you that you would or would not be willing to write a letter to say that I am confident? Say that, no, say that I would be willing to do that, but I want to hear that they think that's the best course of action first. Okay, to say that I am confident is correct? If that's what they want, yes, okay. I think that you do seem confident, yes. Okay. But you don't want to send that letter out until I know that that's the right strategy for you, okay? I and, and they may say, great, that Dr. Shaler would do that, but that's not the right time right now. They might say to do something else. And I can't presume to know what the best course of legal action would be. That's what I'm saying. And they know that. That's when I keep. That's why I keep saying I'm not a lawyer. Okay? That you've got to do what they say. I know the law is an ass. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> yeah, you've got to do it. You've know, you got to do what, what's necessary in order to survive. Yeah, I know. A lot, of, a lot of times they'll tell you to just keep your mouth shut, and that's what you got to do. Yeah, uh, yeah, because um, the lawyer or the uh, the judge kept asking me if I was a lawyer, and I just told him like I don't know what that what the term denotes because I didn't know I didn't know what he meant by the term lawyer. He meant what he meant was that were you admitted into the bar of a he state. He didn't ask that though. No, but he, that's what it means. That's what it means. Yeah, I didn't know if, if he it's, meant that or I should have asked him, but on the spot, I well, didn't know how. If you, if you say, but wait a minute. If you say you didn't know what he means, then he would question your competency. Okay. Because, and see, well, maybe that's why he did, but I just meant I don't know I what don't, you mean. Don't presume. Don't try to guess what he, his intentions were. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. I mean, I've had clients in the past who kept saying to me, I think you were really trying to trick me into doing blah, 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 blah. And I said, that's so wrong, I can't believe that you're even saying it. But don't even say it, because it's just not true. Even if it is true. Again, it's always going to come back to evidence. And your, your intuitive sense is not going to constitute evidence. That's what's going to happen. That's why you've got to talk to the clinic and say, listen to what they say. They can, they'll guide you right. I mean, they have no reason to go against you. Well, I mean, in the past, this is the God's honest truth. When I was being trafficked and I wasn't fighting anybody about anything, even though that wasn't my preference for my life, wasn't right. my choice, um, I didn't have these sort of problems. I never had any issues. I had, you know, other legal problems in the past, and they were easy as could be. There was no problem at all. Even when I, you know, accidentally... Uh, violated the terms of conditions, I just explained to them honestly what happened, and they didn't hold it against me. They didn't, you know, inflict punishment. You made, you made a mistake by having sex with somebody in the beginning. You should have run away. I understand that you were very Apparently, threatened. But, uh, you know, they're, and they're going to say, how were you coerced, you know? Yeah. And they're going to question whether you really had a choice well, I have this this theory of my own because of my own experience that something I know something happened to me when I was young, and I do believe that that has placed inside of my mind uh, like a freeze sort of uh, reaction to the yeah, similar well, type situations. I, I understand. Yeah, but don't say that. Yeah, well, because that's just what I believe because of my experiences. I, no, I no, Jessica. I believe that you believe that. I understand that, but don't say that to the other side. Because they're going to say, oh, she's crazy. Yeah, it's just Understand. very, it's irrational how they get away with, you know, of all of course. this. <laughs> of course. I mean, I said, when I first started teaching in a justice department, I said to one of my colleagues, a professor there, why is it that when the state is accused of wrongdoing, 
and they admit that they have done wrong, there's never any real punishment. And my colleague said, because it's the state, and they can make those decisions. For example, do you, you're pretty young, but do you remember Waco? You probably don't remember Waco. I've heard of it. Well, uh, that was David Koresh. He had a religious cult, and they busted in, and many people were killed, and all this. It was horrible. And Janet Reno was the Attorney General of the United States then. And people were just screaming, this is horrible. And she said, it is horrible. And I take responsibility for it. And I remember what I said. I said, if you take responsibility for it, then why aren't you being prosecuted? Right. Right? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> you just murdered a bunch of people. And uh, I, I mean, I said that rhetorically. My colleagues and I said, because she's the government, and the government will get her off of that. I mean, look what Donald Trump is going through right now. You know, if you got enough money, you can hire endless lawyers and, and somehow hold them off. You know, my own personal feeling is I hope he goes to prison. Yeah. But um, I wish they all would. <laughs> where they belong. You know? Yeah, for the crimes that they committed. I just so hope many. that the current, the current uh, federal prosecutor, Jack, I forget his last name, Scott, or something like that, uh, he seems pretty solid. And he's going he's gonna to keep going to put Trump behind bars. If he's, but you see, even in those situations, everybody knows that he's guilty, but they're not going to move until they have ironclad evidence. If they don't have ironclad evidence, they have no case. It's even on that level. That's yeah, the way. well, I mean, I've talked to people who... You know, they've had their children murdered and dismembered, and they've said even if they catch them red-handed, it doesn't doesn't matter. You know, we've talked to people that have had their children kidnapped and captured and dismembered. Yeah. Where, how were, how did that happen? Um, the, this didn't happen in that restaurant called the Comet. No, right. no, this was a a young lady in uh, Las Vegas, I believe, and she was. Um, prostituting at the time and she, she was found in pieces. Well, I don't know. I don't know anything about that. That's a horrible thing. Yeah, it was, they said it was allegedly a serial killer that was doing that around in Las Vegas. Well, that, that may have been, but I don't think the government had anything to do with that. No, I don't believe so. Right. I don't know for, I don't know right. any of the details other than, you know, just talking to her and her right. own experience and what she told me is that you know, it doesn't, there's, it, you know, in her case, she had felt there was different things that were left out and right. issues. That well, look, had. I've got it. Jessica, I've got to stop. I'm glad that we yep. can talk. Thank you please so follow, very much. Follow, follow my advice and talk yeah. to those clinics, okay? I appreciate your time Here's so very much. If you don't succeed, Thank just you. keep going ahead. you got to save yourself here. Okay. I'll try not to make any more mistakes until I can find somebody to represent right. me and try and get me yeah. out of all this. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Keep in mind some of the things that I've been saying. I will. Okay. Yeah. Um, don't mention Jeffrey Epstein. Don't mention I, President Biden. I know it doesn't matter whether it's true or not at this stage. What's important is for you to stay free. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I would like that a lot. Right. Yeah, I did That's enough good. of you know sharing the truth and do it anymore. Right. It's right. going to take my life. It's It already has for the last that's right. four years. So. That's exactly right. You know, I'll tell you one quick story. I was invited to present at a, they call them First Nations people. That's basically Native Americans up in Canada and in the United States. They don't recognize the boundary between Canada and the U.S. They are their own country. And they wanted me to come and lead a conference which was quite an honor. Okay? It was on drugs and alcohol because they have a lot of problems on those reservations. Yeah. And so my teacher, a very distinguished psychiatrist, was coming along with me. And as we went across the border from the United States into Canada, this was up in Alberta, um, he went through customs within a couple of minutes. And then I was right behind him. And I got taken aside, and I was 45 minutes <laughs> in the back room, and my, my teacher said, what the hell is going on? He said, I've been waiting 45 minutes for you. And 
I said, well, they asked me if I was getting paid to do it. <laughs> I said, well, yeah, I'm getting paid like a thousand dollars. It was minimal, right? Right. And he said, that's where you made your mistake. <laughs> and I said, well, I realize it now. I was just telling the truth. And because I said I got some minimal thing, I should have said, no, I'm doing it pro bono for free. <laughs> and, I, and that's what he had said. He said, I just said that I just lied. Right. And he went right through. And he said, you told the truth, and you ended up losing your freedom for 45 minutes. Oh, my God. Minutes. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good. So, you know. Yep. That's a good story because I've, I've kind of learned the same lesson already. Um, yeah. They've asked me some questions in this case, and I don't lie at all. I never lie. Right. I mean, I have, but it's so rare. I know the well, times not, I have. Gonna, we're not going to make sure you have a good seat in heaven, I'll tell you that. Who? The government. Oh, no, not them. them. I was they're, more concerned you know, about don't other. Don't trust them. Don't trust them. Yeah. You know, what, is, what was the old saying? We're from the government. We're here to help yeah. you. No. Just, yeah, I, I have a good feeling I'll be able to get out of it and, and move on. Good. I have a place to move now because, good. you know, it's been attacks on my own property as well, <laughs> even before I'm the sure. case. Yeah. You won't tell me anymore. No. I don't want any more information out yeah. of me. I, who knows who's, who's recording this. I mean, this particular program that I'm using with you yeah. does not allow any recording. It has a funny or, name. Well, doxy. It's used by doctors and psychologists. Oh, and okay. It, it has to be, it has to abide, you know what HIPAA is, right? Yeah. It's, it has to abide by that, which means no recording. Okay. So you're, you're safe on that. Okay? Yeah, because when it said dox, they also use that as a term to expose somebody's personal and no, private no. information in no, slang no, no, terms nowadays. <laughs> that's why I was like, I don't know why he's using this thing called Docs. It sounds kind of weird to me. <laughs> oh, no, it's Docs. It's just the name. I, I For doctors. I some other doctors, they use it, so it's, it's fine. Right, yep. Okay. I appreciate your time so very okay. much. Okay. and Thank Yeah, you. it's an honor to meet okay. you. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. All right. Okay. Take care. All right, you too. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. 